Hey, welcome to our YouTube. We're about to listen to a message from our church here in Hillsong, Denmark and Malmo from one of our team members. Make sure to comment below, like, subscribe, or even share with a friend and stick around afterwards for different ways to connect. It wouldn't be the same without you here and it's just uh, an honor to be in church with you and to be bringing the word today. But I, I was wondering if we, if we can pray together before we sit down also uh, there in Aarhus and Olborg. Uh, we love that you are here as well and if you're watching from, from anywhere else on, online, uh, love that you are with us. But can we pray together? Uh, Jesus, we are so grateful that, uh, that, that you are here, that we, that we get to have an encounter with you today, Father. And as we, as we open your word, Father, we just pray that, uh, that you will speak to us, that you will guide us. We pray that you will transform us as we, as we read this, uh, this from this book that you have given us. And we're so grateful, Father. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said together. Amen. Amen. And I was also wondering if we can thank the creative team up here. Uh, you guys can have a seat. And you can find a seat as well. Love to be with Hillsong Copenhagen and Aarhus and Aalborg today. Uh, and as, as Phil said, um, uh, we are slowly kind of stepping into this role as, um, as location pastors here in Copenhagen. I bring greetings from my wife, uh, Evelina, who is in Cop uh, in I'm in Copenhagen. Uh, where <laughs> uh, she is, she's in, in Malmö today, um, where we are celebrating Father's Day, actually. So if you, if, if you are from, from Sweden or if you're just a father, just, just take the extra Father's Day. I also know it's Father's Day in Norway, I think, so, uh, so I, I need to remember that, remember to call my dad. Um, but she brings her regard, and hopefully she'll be able to come uh, a little bit more over here as well soon. But I'm excited to get into the Word of God with you all. Uh, and if you want a title for this message today... Uh, it is called The Good Shepherd, The Good Shepherd. And we're going to uh, read from, uh, from John chapter 10 today. That's sort of where we're going to camp for a little bit, and, and then we're going to take it from there. But, but I, I was wondering if, if there's anyone here. Hey, Tomo. <laughs> Sorry, I just got distracted there. <laughs> um, I was wondering if there's anyone here who remember that there was a time in history where it was possible to get lost. Uh, yeah, that, that, that you can actually show up somewhere, you know, maybe, maybe you're on holiday, maybe, maybe you're going somewhere, and, 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 then, and then you actually you get there and, and, and you look out in the streets and you have no idea where you are, and maybe the only way that you can figure out where you need to go is to ask a stranger. Can you believe that that time existed? Thank God that time is over. <laughs> now, all we need to do is open our phone and look at the GPS. You know, I, I feel like the GPS is, 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 is one of the inventions that I, that I use the most. And I, I just feel like almost like, you know, in, you know, a special ops something, you know, because you can drop me anywhere in the world. And I can find my way around, you know, just, just, just open this device, it tells me where I am, it tells me what's around me, and within a second I can find the nearest good coffee shop, I can look at the, the ratings, you know, may, maybe not drop me anywhere, as in like in Alaska or something, maybe, maybe that will be a little bit more tricky, but usually, you know, you, you, you can just open the GPS, you can, it helps you to make sense of your physical surroundings, and then you just follow the arrow, just for, for, uh, although sometimes, I have to say, it doesn't always work. I don't know if you've ever found yourself walk, walking in circles because, because the GPS ca can't figure out, are you walking this way, are you walking that way? <laughs> I, I, I was, by, by the way, I, I was watching this, uh, the, the, the Office episode this, um, a, a couple of weeks ago, and, 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 and you know, there was, I, I, sometimes you just watch something and you feel seen. I don't know if you've ever <laughs> experienced that, but... But, but Michael, one of the lead characters, he's, he's driving his car, following the GPS, and the GPS tells him to take a right, and you know, the, like, as he's turning right, he's driving towards a lake, and Dwight, the, the guy, the guy on the, in the passenger seat says, you have to turn around the car, we're driving into a lake, and Michael is like, no, but the GPS is saying, we need to, we need to go this way, and, and, and yes, they drive into the lake, and oh, thank God I haven't done that, but, I, but, but I've done similar things. <laughs> And, you know, but, uh, but you know, we, we all appreciate the, the help that we can get in making, making sense of, 
of our physical surroundings, our geography, and how to, how to make our way around in the world. But, but, I, but I think we all realize as well that sometimes we have a need that is a little bit deeper than that. <laughs> you know, it, it would be nice if it was possible to make sense of, you know, the world around us, the things that are going on, and maybe more especially kind of the place, my place within that world, and, and how I should navigate it, and how, how do I fit in, and, and all of those questions that we can sometimes wrestle with. And, and, you know, at the time when, when Jesus was walking around on the planet, you know, hum humanity looked very different, you know, in they didn't have a GPS, for example, uh, but, they, but they still had the same fundamental uh, needs that we have as human beings today. And, you know, they, they were living in a society where they were trying to make sense of what was going on, the, on around them. They were, they were looking at the oppression that they were facing, and they were longing for this Messiah that would come one day to liberate them from their oppressors, to set them free, to establish the kingdom of God, and, and, and to lead them into the next season and you know as Jesus was walking around and he was preaching and he was doing miracles a lot of people were kind of kind of jumping on the Jesus wagon and started to follow him but then at the same time there were people who were starting to ask questions you know are you sure he's not driving us into a lake can, can, can we be certain about this? You know, there was these this different conspiracies that were growing up. Some people said, oh, yeah, of course, he is from God. He's doing all these great things. But then there were other people who said, no, he is from the devil. You know, that's a pretty big jump there <laughs> to say that Jesus is from the devil. And, and, but, but, you know, th those were the types of conversations that were going on. And, and into that context, into that conversation, Jesus steps in and he, do he does what he often does. And that he is that he, he shares a story to explain more about who he is and also about what it means to follow him, to be part of his new kingdom. And, 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 and I don't know if you have ever found yourself, uh, you know, if you have a really good story that you want to share. And as you're jumping into telling the story, you, you realize by looking at the people's faces that they are not getting it. I, I, I have to say, explaining a joke is like, it's, it's the worst thing that can happen to me. Like, I, I just feel so dumb. But... I, I, I just want to tell you, if, if, if you have been in that situation, you are in good company, because that, that, that is exactly what, hap what is happening to Jesus in John chapter 10. So because of that, he sort of tells the story a few different times, because the people aren't getting it. But, and, and, you know, as, as he's doing that, he's kind of adding a few more nuances to it, a few, a few more layers to it. So what I thought we would do today is just to read this, uh, this parable about the, the good shepherd that Jesus is telling about himself, and, and then kind of just taking each story by itself. And obviously there's overlaps. And, and, but, but, but I want to highlight sort of three things that, that I think we can take away from, from, from what Jesus is trying to tell us. And I'm sure that you can, you can find more things as well as you dig into it. But, uh, but I thought it was, would be a good place for us to start. Because I don't know about you, but I need a good shepherd. I need direction in my life. I, I, I need someone to help me, to guide me, to make sense of this world. And that is exactly what Jesus is speaking into here. So can we read together? In John chapter 10, we're going to start in verse 1. So he's talking to the Pharisees, the people who were spreading rumors and talking about him. And, and he's saying this. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. And if you want to take notes today, and if you want to jot something down, then the way, then the way, way I would kind of phrase this first part we want to talk about is that he calls us by name, that we're called by name, called by name. I, I was on uh, YouTube uh, the other week, 
Uh, and, 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 you know, and I know that YouTube was, was kind of made popular, and, or I'm not sure if this is facts, but this is at least the, the story I've been told by, you know, you know cat videos apparently was the thing that, that really got YouTube going. But I found something that I think is even better than cat, cat videos on YouTube, and that is videos, and there's lots of these out there. There's just a whole genre of, of movies out here of dogs being reunited with their owners. You know, particularly, you know, it's best if, you know, it's been a few years, maybe the owner has been off at war, you know, for a few years, and then, and then they're going to be reunited again. And, you know, I saw this one video where, where the man comes and, you know, the dog is there, there's lots of people there, but then you can see in the dog's eyes, you know, he has recognized the owner. And you know, it's a big German shepherd, and the, and the German shepherd just runs, runs towards the owner and then actually jumps up and gives him a hug like this. <laughs> you know, it's like covering the whole man. <laughs> the dog is just so happy to see him. Isn't it, is it pretty amazing that, that, that animals and humans can have such a special bond? You know, um, Pastor Thomas was actually sharing, share, sharing with, with us last time I preached this uh, sermon in an evening service because obviously he knows this stuff. But he had, he had read some research about sheep, uh, and apparently they are like sp specialists at facial recognition, you know, e even more than any other animals. And I'm like, that's cool. I'm, so I kind of looked into it. And then it, it actually turns out that there's been done studies with sheep where they can recognize humans uh, that they haven't seen in a year, on the photo, photograph, they can see them and they have an emotional response <laughs> to, to the photo. How, how amazing is that? You know, that, 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 and, and you know, I, I actually know people who own sheep because I'm growing up on, a, on the countryside, but it's like when, when I look at sheep, you know, they, to be honest, they all look the same to me. You know, it's like uh, sheep one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> and then, then, you know, I, I have no idea how to tell them apart, but, but the person who owns the sheep can actually walk up and say, oh, this is, this is Trolls, and this is uh, Turil, or uh, and wh whatever sheep names are, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. But, 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 you know, the shepherd doesn't see just a flock of sheep, he actually sees, he or she sees the individual sheep. And, you know, it's, it's the same thing that, that Jesus is saying, you know, the good shepherd, the, the shepherd that he is, he doesn't just look at people and just see a crowd. No, he actually knows them individually by name. And I just want to encourage you here uh, today. You know, where, wherever you're sitting, Jesus is not seeing just a crowd today. If it's here or anywhere else that you might be, he is seeing you. He knows your name. He sees you. He, he, he knows what's going on on the inside of you. And that's, and that's a pretty, pretty special thing, isn't it? Uh, because I think one of the main needs that we have as human beings, this is at least true for me, is to actually be known. It's the one thing that we maybe all long for, to be, to be truly known by someone. But if we're honest as well, it's maybe also one of the things that we can find the most frightening. And, 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 and you know, we, we're, kind of, we're kind of caught in this dilemma because, you know, we're, as we're getting to know someone, as, as a relationship is developing, we know that, okay, like, we, we, we sort of know that if I don't reveal all of myself, I can't be fully loved because the person won't know all of me. But at the same time, it can feel safer to kind of just safeguard a little bit because if I show this part, you know, there's also this, the, the, this kind of this, this fear of being rejected. And, you know, the beautiful thing is that when we encounter Jesus as the shepherd who calls us by name, we discover this person who, who, who knows us better than anyone, yet loves us fully. He knows us better than we know ourselves even. He sees all of those different parts of us, but still he loves us completely. And, you know, King, King David in, in the Old Testament, he, he, had this, like he had this experience, and you can see this throughout the Bible, but I wanted to, to, to read from Psalm chapter 139 and verse 1 to 6, just David's response to this revelation. He says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going in and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. And before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. He had this experience that, that we are fully known and fully loved. We are fully known and fully 
loved. I love what C.S. Lewis said about this. He, he said in a, in, in a letter that he wrote about prayer, he said that we are always completely and therefore equally known to God. That is our destiny, whether we like it or not. But though he, this knowledge never varies, the quality of our being known can. So because God knows everything, we, we are known completely. That's just a fact. We can't run away from it. We can't hide from that. But, but, but what, what he's saying is that there's almost like a quality, like the, the, the quality of being known can change depending on how we respond to that. So, so what he goes on to say is that when we actually decide that we're, we're not going to just make that an abstract idea that God knows everything about everyone, but decide to accept that he knows me fully, he loves me fully, and because of that I'm going to, the, the word he uses is to unveil myself completely. That's when we step into his presence in a different way. That's, that's when the quality of being known is being more completed, if, if, if if, if, if you're with me on that. So what, what I would encourage you to do today and me to do today is actually to look at, is there somewhere in my life that I haven't unveiled myself, where I'm still hiding from God? He's, he sees what you're trying to hide, and we, we sort of know that. But at the same time, we, we, we can have this barrier bef- in front of God because we might be, we, you know, we might be afraid that we're going to be rejected or, or whatever else. But I just want to encourage you that he knows you completely and, and, and he loves you completely. And, and, and what we can do is to actually just step into his presence and be known by him. And then the other side of this, this, this first passage here that really stands out to me is that it's not just that he knows us, but that the sheep knows him. They recognize his voice. And, and you know, that's, that, that's also a pretty cool thing. You know, that, that Jesus, he doesn't just want to know us, but he, but he wants that relationship. He wants for us to know him. You know, in Hebrews chapter 1, in verse 2 to, th- two to 3, if, if you read that through, we're going to read some, some verses there, but, or some, some words there. But, but, but you know, it's talking about how does actually God reveal himself to us. And, and, and the writer of Hebrews is saying that in the last days, he has spoken to us by his son, who he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. You know, that actually in Jesus we get to know the, the one who created us. We get to know the one, the one who formed us in our mother's womb and who has a plan and a purpose for our life. But how, how do the sheep learn to, to know the shepherd's voice? You know, the, the shepherd would be there with the sheep. And, you know, you, you, you would know this is true if you know someone who owns a dog that human beings speak to animals. We're not, maybe they're not sure if they understand it, but sometimes it seems like they understand it. I don't know how, exactly how it, how it works, but it's almost like it's, like a, it's more a relational thing that the person like actually shares. You know, sometimes I've, I've talked to someone who said, yeah, I share all my deepest secrets to the dog. I'm like, <laughs> like okay. <laughs> but, 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 you know, when, like, when, when you're living in community like that, like the sheep and the shepherd would do, uh, speaking and, and you're pointing things out and leading, you know, and feeding and, and all those things. You're developing that uh, community and that relationship. And, you know, how, like, are, are we actually learning to hear his voice? Are we actually spending the time with him? Because, because there's other voices out there, as, as, as Jesus is saying, that is, is going to try to get us to go somewhere else. But Jesus, he has a voice that we need to be able to recognize. And the way that we need to learn, like the way that we learn to notice his voice, to recognize his voice, is actually to immerse ourselves in the relationship with him. You know, first of all, he's, he has given us his word. He has given us his word. And we're like, I'm, I'm asking myself the question, what voices am I listening to at the, fir- the first thing in the morning? Because if I'm honest with you, more often than not, it is my phone. And I, like, there are so many voices in my phone. <laughs> it's, just, it's just ridiculous. You know? and, 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 to, and to be honest, the, the thing that, that, that re- like kind of brings out in me is it's not really that, that I feel a bigger sense of purpose and direction and clarity and peace. No, it actually rather brings me some anxiety. 
But, but actually, where, where do I go when I, when, I, when I need instruction? Where do I go when I need to hear a piece of advice, a wisdom? And, and you know, what, what I would encourage you to do, as I'm encouraging me to do today, is actually to make sure that, that, that you immerse yourself in his word. Not, not because it's a religious duty, because, but because Jesus wants to teach you his voice. So that you also will be able to distinguish between his words and the enemy's words. When, when, you're, when you're just thinking, when, you, when you're hearing thoughts come into your head, you will be able to recognize when is it Jesus speaking to me and when is it something else. You know, actually, that, that, that is a thing that we can learn by just immersing ourselves in relationship to him. Do we know him? Do we know his voice? Are we committed to listening? And, and you know, for, for me, that, that, is, that is also a challenge. You know, when I'm making decisions, what voices do I listen to? When, when I'm deciding what direction to take in life, where, where do I turn? You know, we have the word of God. We have the, we have the other sheep. Sorry for calling you a sheep. But, but, but you know, we're, we're the flock that can encourage one another. We, we go to church. You know, we, we, we have such safeguards in our life that we can actually get into if we want to. But, but you know, it requires us to say, Jesus, I want to hear your voice. Because he is speaking. The question is, are we listening and then you can see the frustration on Jesus' face because he, he, he used this metaphor and then he could see people, they, they are not getting what I'm saying, saying so therefore Jesus said again in verse 7 very truly I tell you I am the gate for the sheep and all who have come before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep have not listened to them I am the gate Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and will find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And as you're noticing, it's, it's sort of the same story, but it's also slightly different. Uh, but... But if, but if I were to kind of just, just to describe kind of the next thing that we're going to talk about is, is, is that we are invited to follow. We are invited to follow. You can see it both in, you know, the, the shepherd that is, that, that, that is calling his sheep to follow him, you know, out during the day, you know, but, but also that he brings them into the sheep pen at night. You know, in... in, uh, in in the Middle East where, where, where Jesus was living at the time and the shepherds there, what they would often do is that during the night, they, they would actually sleep by the entrance, to, like, by the gate into where the sheep uh, were, were sort of gathered so that they would be able to protect them from outside predators and also preventing sheep from running out. Because I don't know if, if, if you've been around sheep, but, uh, but, but they, they, can, they can sometimes be a little bit confused uh, and, you know, kind of, kind of run off uh, of somewhere else. And, you know, the reality is that, that a sheep that is separated from the flock, a sheep that is lost, is very vulnerable. Like, sheep are vulnerable animals. Uh, they, in general, you know, they don't have any big teeth or any ability to defend themselves against predators. And, but especially when they are separated from the flock, they are vulnerable. You know, that's why we have the story in, in the Bible where, where Jesus is talking about himself as a shepherd again, where he goes after the lost sheep. You know, what, what a beautiful story that is. You know, that Jesus recognizes that the sheep that is lost, the sheep that is separated from the flock, is a lot more vulnerable than the, than the 99 that, that is here. So he leaves the 99 and he goes after the one. You know, and when, when he finds it, he brings the sheep back into the flock. You know, how beautiful is that? That no matter where we are, Jesus will come to find us. Can, can I just encourage you that maybe if you feel a little bit lost today, maybe you feel like, no, but I'm, I'm kind of way off here. I'm not sure how to wake my way back. Can I just tell you that Jesus, he is not waiting for you to come to him. He, he has already made his way to you. And what he does is that he brings us back home. But you know, there's, 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 this, there's, this, there's this dynamic of, of, of hearing his voice, of, of learning to listen to him, but then also to decide to follow him. You know, 
faith is not just about believing in Jesus. You know, that's, that's obviously the first part of it. We need to believe uh, him, who he says he is, and you know, stepping into the relationship with him. But then the, then, the, then the way that we walk that out is that he says, come and follow me. So you now we walk step by step by step because we recognize that we need a shepherd. We recognize that we do not have it within ourselves to always distinguish how do we face this challenge? How do we move through this? We, we, we are not created to be able to do life on our own. We are created to live in dependence on the shepherd. You know, so, so are, are we following Jesus? Are, are we allowing him to lead us wherever we're going and then at night actually to walk in through the gate and to lie down and sleep in peace because we know that Jesus is at the gate, and he is protecting us. You know, Jesus' point to the Pharisees was that the people who were following him were following him exactly because he was leading them to a flourishing life. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, Jesus says this, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, it's a strong claim, and Jesus is making it confidently that only Jesus can lead us to true life. Only Jesus can lead us to true life. And then Jesus says that there are other voices out there that are giving empty promises, but in reality, they are going to leave you for dead. You know, and, and I think it was the... Was, or it, it was a writer named David Foster Wallace, who, who, uh, who wasn't a Christian at the time. We don't exactly know uh, what, what his beliefs were at the end of his life. Um, but he, he, he had this observation about how life works. And he's, he said that, you know, we all worship something. There, like, even if you call yourself an atheist, uh, actually, we all worship something. Because in reality, what worship means is kind of what, what are you aiming your life towards? What are you aiming at? Where, where are you drawing life from? Where are you drawing meaning from? Where are you drawing kind of, kind of the direction that you need? That, that's what you're following. That's what you're worshiping. So he's saying, like, everyone is worshiping something. The only question is, what do you worship? And then he says this in, in what has become a very famous speech, he says this, and the compelling reason for maybe choosing some sort of God or spiritual type thing to worship is that pretty much anything else you worship will eat you alive. If you worship money and things, if they are where you tap real meaning in life, then you will never, ever have enough, never feel you have enough. It's the truth. Worship your body and beauty and sexual allure, and you will always walk away feeling ugly. Worship power and you will end up feeling weak and afraid. And you will need ever more power over others to numb you to your own fear. Worship your intellect being seen as smart. And you will end up feeling stupid, a fraud, always on the verge of being found out. You know, whatever else that we're following, whatever else that we're aiming our lives towards, whatever else we might be worshiping, and you know, that's, that's for all of us, even for us who, who are calling ourselves Christians, we need to ask ourselves the question, is there something that I'm aiming my life at more than Jesus? Is there something that I'm following more than his voice? Is there something that I'm following more than the life that he has for me? Because in the reality is, all of those things, they will end up eating us alive. The only one who can give us life and life to the full is Jesus. It is Jesus. Am I following him? Even when it doesn't make sense to me. Even when I think I'm smarter than what he's telling me. Do, do I go off and do my own thing because I'm listening to some other voice or I'm believing in my own intellect or my own desires or whatever it might be? Or am I deciding I am going to trust that my shepherd knows the terrain. He knows where the water is. He knows where the dangerous cliffs are. He knows the way to, to, to a green path where I can actually eat and, and get what I need. Because in rea reality, when we... Look around, Jesus is there, and he's saying, come and follow me. But it is our choice. 
Will we walk through that gate? Will we step into his presence? Will we follow him one more step? Because the reality is, when we're trying to make sense of what's going on, when we're trying to navigate, when we're trying to, we, 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 we're not going to see the full picture. It, it doesn't work like the GPS because, uh, because that's not the way that God works. The way that he works is that he is a shepherd. Jesus is a shepherd and he takes us and he leads us step by step. And then, Jesus goes on because he can see we haven't fully gotten it yet. And, and this time he sort of takes the nuance and he just takes it one level deeper. And from verse 11 he goes on and he says, I am the good shepherd. Now he leaves no. He's like, okay, these people are misunderstanding it. I'm going to make it as clear as I can. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. And then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep, they know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And if, and if I was going to kind of put down in one line what the next part, of, part is about is that we are saved through sacrifice. Saved through sacrifice. Now one, one question that I, I, I encounter a lot when, whenever I'm looking around and also in myself is, is, is this question of what, what is love really? What is love really? Because you know, our, our culture put a lot of emphasis on you know, the feeling part of it, the ecstasy part of it, the, 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 the desire in it. But, but what Jesus is showing us and what the Bible is telling us is that love is a lot deeper than just that. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16, the writer says this, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Jesus showed us that what love truly is, is sacrifice. It's actually laying down your life for someone else. Putting aside your own needs and desires so that you can lift someone else. So that you can lift someone else. And Jesus, showed, what, what Jesus is saying is that, you know, the, these other people who, who, who are saying that they're shepherds, in reality, they're not. And how do you know that? Because when push comes to show, shove, when the danger comes, what they end up doing is that they end up abandoning the sheep. Because if the, the truth is that if someone says that they love you, but the first time is a little bit inconvenient to them, the first time is a little bit uncomfortable, or you know, there's, there, there's a little bit of a struggle, if, 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 if the moment that happens, they leave, you know, then, then it probably wasn't true love. Because true love sacrifice you know and Jesus he has actually saved us through sacrifice he he said you know that's how you know that I am the good shepherd that no matter what comes no matter what happens no matter who comes against you no matter what what trouble you might face no matter if it's foggy if it's snowing even if, when the wolf comes I will never ever leave you and I will go towards it and I will fight the wolf because I am not in it just because of what you can do for me. I, I am in it because I'm committed to the sheep. They are mine. I call them by name. I've invited them to follow. We, we do life together and nothing is going to separate me from them. And even if the wolf comes, I, I will give my life in the process. And that's what he ended up doing on that cross. When he was put up on that cross, he, he showed us what love truly is because he he laid down his life for us so that we can find life in him you know we have free salvation at infinite cost Jesus' love for us cost him everything it cost him everything but still he loved us enough so when we are facing storms when there's fog when we can't seem to find our way you know when 
when we face the, the wolf, the shepherd, he is right there with us. He is right there with us. And, but then it says that the shepherd dies. <laughs> that, that would have been a bit of a strange thing. It's a beautiful thing, but also what happens to the sheep then? <laughs> But that's what they said when Jesus was up on this cross as well. They were like, where, where is his God now? But what they didn't realize was that even in death, there is life. Because Jesus, he gave his life, but he had the power to take it back up again. So that even in death, he conquered death and he rose up again to a new life. And he's calling us to the same. So I just want to encourage you. If you are in a season where you're wondering, where is God in my situation right now? Can I just encourage you that he is on the cross. He, he, he is giving his life for you. He is right there. He is suffering with you. He is crying with you. And even on the other side of that, you will experience life. Because Jesus has come to give us life and life to the full. No one else can give it to us. But he freely gave up his life for us because we are saved through his sacrifice because he is the good shepherd the, the greek word used for good is is I, I would i don't know how to pronounce greek but it's, it's pronounced honestus as far as far as i know how to pronounce greek and and you know it, it can actually also be translated as beautiful the beautiful shepherd and that's not really talking about uh, the way jesus looked <laughs> it's talking about the beauty of his love for us. It, like, what, what Jesus was saying is, you, you guys don't understand it. You know, I am the good shepherd. What I am doing, when I'm speaking, people want to follow. When, when, when I'm guiding people, people actually experience that they're stepping into true life. Not the life that the world offers, but true, true life. And actually when people realize that I have, I'm giving my life for them they want to follow me even more and that's where we are friends we have recognized that we we know the true good shepherd the one who knows us the best and loves us the most we, we know that we are fully known we are fully loved and we get to know his voice and we get to follow him and let him lead us through life and we get to be able to experience this salvation through his sacrifice. And, and I want to take just a moment right now and just pray for anyone here who haven't yet realized that Jesus is your shepherd. You, you, you haven't yet actually said, Jesus, I want to follow you. I don't want, to, I want to, don't want to try to do it in my own strength any longer or try to worship some other thing. I actually recognize that I want to follow you. So if I can just get everyone to bow your eyes and bow your eyes as well. That is a very figurative way of saying close your eyes. Bow your eyes and bow your heads and just, just to give you a moment of privacy because I, I just want you to think about Jesus for a second, the good shepherd who gave his life for you. And if you haven't yet made that decision to connect your life with him, then you have this opportunity today because Jesus, he is, he's not waiting for you to come to him. He's already made his way to you. He died for you on that cross while you were still far away from him, it's already done. It's already over with. The only thing that we need to do to is to respond right now and to say, Jesus, I want what you have for me. So when I count to three, if, if that is you, that you want to connect your life to Jesus today, I, I just want you to raise your hand uh, just high enough and long enough so that I know who I'm praying for. But more importantly, you're not raising it to me. You're raising it to Jesus just to say, Jesus, I want you to be my shepherd. I want you to lead me through life. I want you to lead me to the life that you have for me. So if that is you, if you're coming to Jesus for the first time or today you're coming back to him, maybe something has happened and you realize that you walked away, but today you realize you want to come back to him. Then, then when I count to three, just raise your hand. One, God loves you. He is the good shepherd who gave his life for you. Two, the only thing that you need to do now is to respond. So three, just raise your hand wherever you are if you want to connect your life with Jesus today. Yeah, thank you there. Thank you. Anybody else? To join these brave people. Yeah, thank you up the back there. You can take down your hands. We're going to pray a prayer and just 
a prayer connecting our lives to the good shepherd to say, I want to follow you. And, and especially if you raise your hand, um, then this is for you. But, but we're all going to pray this together as a church family. So, so I'm going to pray first and then you pray after me. So say, Jesus, I thank you that you are my good shepherd. I thank you that you gave your life for me on that cross. I make you my Lord, my Savior, and my friend. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate together? A massive congratulations. We really hope that that encouraged and blessed you. If you made a decision for Jesus, a massive congratulations from us. We would love to be in contact with you, send you a Bible and connect you to a local church. So just below in the details of this episode, there's a different way to contact us. I can encourage you to reach out so that we can help you. Obviously, if you live anywhere near one of our physical locations, we really hope to see you in person very soon. There is nothing like being in the room. Can I also encourage you, if this blessed you, why don't you share this with friends and you know, make sure you pass it on to them as well. Make sure to click, click subscribe so that you don't miss the next episode we send out. God bless you.